Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Moon Lacquer. In today's video, I am doing my haul from Glisten and Glow from their 14th anniversary release. I ended up grabbing two from that collection and then I grabbed one from a previously released collection and two from their last chance section. And as I've been doing lately, I have picked a few colors to try each of these polishes over, save for just the one that is more of a curly. I only chose one to try that one over, but let's go ahead and dig in. The first polish is one that I got from the anniversary collection. This one is Celebrate We Will. This one is a really beautiful shifty purple polish. It's got this sort of an eggplanty purple there's emerald green. You can see they're flashing at the edges a bit of blue and fuchsia. It is beautiful. There's also like another shade of like an aqua. I mean, look at all the rainbows. It is absolutely gorgeous. So for this one, I did choose two colors. The first one that we're going to try it over is Orly's Let the Good Times Roll. And then the second one is Orly's Sugar Plum Soiree. So I just sort of tried to match a few of the colors that I was seeing in that polish. So here is one coat of it on its own. Now this does not have a super, super squishy base. So I am hoping it'll look good over these colors. But there it is in one coat on its own. Such a shifty beauty. And then one coat over Let the Good Times Roll. That's our dark green. So like I said, this is a purple tinted base. So I'm not actually sure how much of this base color is going to show through, but I thought it would be interesting to try. Obviously, you're going to get more opacity over any sort of a cream. I still can't tell how much of the green, if any, I'm really seeing through. Um... Yeah, even in different lighting, I'm not really seeing an obvious addition of green. But let's see how it looks over Sugar Plum Soiree. This one might be a little bit more obvious of what uh, the base is. Yeah, that's picking up more of a berry tone, almost a little bit more like the base color actually is. So there is a difference. Maybe not just an opacity, but how dark that dark green is affecting that color. And then here's a second coat of Celebrate We Will. I think I did a bit thicker of a coat than I probably normally would. But there it is, two coats all on its own. And yeah, that's pretty opaque in two coats all on its own. So two coats all on its own, one coat over Orly's Let the Good Times Roll, and one coat over Orly's Sugar Plum Soiree. So yeah, definitely over that green is where you're getting the richer, darker color, almost as though I put it over a black, especially in lower lighting. But yeah, I think both of them look pretty good. It just depends on what sort of a look you're going for. Again, not that this one really needs it. It isn't a super sheer polish. Here it is in two coats on its own. But I mean, look at that shift. This is so beautiful. And there again is Over Let the Good Times Roll. And Sugar Plum Soiree. So that first one from the Anniversary Collection was Celebrate We Will. And then the next one from the Anniversary Collection was number 14. And this is a beautiful flaky balm. So this is in a darkened, I think, black base. And then you have a bunch of those flakies in a lot of different fall colors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is in a blackened base. So again, we don't have a super duper sheer base here. So I'm curious how much of a change we're going to see over other colors. So here's one coat of number 14. Oh, there we go. Actually, this is sort of a jelly. A little bit thinner or sheerer than I was initially worried it might be when we were taking a look at it on the brush. And for that one, I did go ahead and just pick a black cream. I'm using China Glaze's Liquid Leather. And then I thought it would be interesting to see how it would look over something not quite as dark. So I'm doing Orly's Persistent Memory. This is like a deep brown leaning brick red. So here it is over liquid leather. Hi. 
Obviously you're getting a very opaque finish there with just one coat of flakies on top. And then let's see if I see much of a difference with it over persistent memory. And remember it does have that squishy black base. So it might slightly tint that dark red. And yeah, I would say in some lights, it's probably not gonna be that big of a difference right here in this, in front of the camera lighting, it's really not showing much of a difference. But I feel like when I have this in more direct lighting, I can kind of see a difference there in the base, but it is very subtle. And I think that's because the, the base of this is that blackened jelly. And I did try it over two dark colors. I probably should have picked maybe a lighter color but let's go ahead and see a second coat of number 14. And that always is the fun guessing of trying to pick colors to try certain polishes over. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I think with this one, it's just pretty much the same across the board. Obviously you're gonna get a darker look, a more opaque once it's over a black cream. When you compare these two in more direct lighting, you do still get a little bit more of a softness in the two coats all on its own. But I would say that one is somewhere between a two and three coater, depending on your nail length and application, because it is a blackened base and it is jam packed full of those flakies. So I think some people might be okay with two coats. I know for myself, I'd probably just wear that in two coats. And again, one coat over black and one coat over persistent memory. So yeah, rather intrigued that there wasn't a bigger difference but like i said that's what we're here for little experimentation in layering so that was number 14. next up is one from a previous collection this is tinsley park after dark and this is one that definitely caught my eye as i was scrolling the website and i think you can see why this is a larger particled shifting shimmer that has all the rainbows in it and it's in a dark purple jelly base. So you're gonna have that purple squishy base and all of those beautiful colors. I'm seeing reds, coppers, greens, golds, yellow. So let's go ahead and see this one on its own and over two colors. For this one, I tried to match the purple base. So the first one is Orly's On the Edge as a dark purple. And then the second one is a milk chocolate brown from Orly called Don't Be Suspicious. So here's Tinsley Park in one coat. And yeah, this one should definitely show some differences because it is a squishy base and it's not as dark as that black was. So there it is in one coat. And I mean, look at that, that shimmer. Holy moly, that is gorgeous. And then one coat over on the edge. Wow. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is stunning. And then one coat over our chocolate brown. Don't be suspicious. And yeah, this definitely has a different look. Yay. You definitely see a difference there. So this one should have some nice versatility. I'm seeing fall in that chocolate brown. Don't be suspicious. That is beautiful. So here's a second coat of Tinsley Park. You're gonna build up that squishy purple and that shifting shimmer. Wow, yeah, that is absolutely stunning. I think this is one where maybe some people might be okay with, with two coats because it is so jam packed full of that shimmer, but it is still a little bit squishy here on my clear nail wheel. So just something to keep in mind. Also, it really is gonna depend on your nail length and application, but that is really gorgeous. Love the shift in that one. I do really like it over that purple, but it sort of has this more mysterious look to it when it's layered all on its own. It's not quite so obviously purple as it was over on the edge, but I do really like it over that chocolate brown. So yeah, this should be very fun to play with over some other colors. And then here's a third coat. There we go. 
Yeah, there is definitely a difference. That base, like I said, is a little bit more mysterious when it's built up on its own. It's not quite a vibrant shade of purple. Whereas when I put it over on the edge, you have that almost brighter sense of a purple, even though it is a dark purple. So it very much changes the look of the polish. And again, I really like it over the brown. That is very fall-esque to me. I mean, that shimmer is fall in, in a bottle, but yeah, very pretty. That is, I think, one of my favorites. So that one was Tinsley Park After Dark. Now we're getting into the Crelly. This one was in the last chance section for $5.50. This is Mindful Meditation from the Inner Peace Collection. And this one really caught my eye because I think this is so cute for spring. It is a lavender or maybe even lilac base. There is that pinch of a pink tone to it. And then it has purple metallic flakes in it. I think I've mentioned it before in other videos where I've gotten a polish that has those purple metallic flakes, I feel like I don't see them all that often, especially in a more simplistic formula like this, where it's a curly just with one component in it. So I really, really like this. It definitely caught my eye. Love the combination of a pinker leaning purple with those purple flakes. Now, because that one is a Crelly and it's going to be more opaque all on its own, I did only decide to try it over a matching base, Orly's Sea Blossom from the latest spring collection. So here is one coat of Mindful Meditation. And yeah, I think this is going to be way too creamy to really try over very many other colors because you're just going to sort of have this creamy consistency over that color. But anything close in the same family of like a pinky purple, lilac, or maybe even lavender could work. So here it is in one coat over Sea Blossom. I love this mix. Oh my goodness. Those purple flakes are gorgeous. So obviously you're going to get a boost in opacity, putting it over one coat of a cream. I still think you do get a nice layering though of those flakes in the Crelly base because it is a Crelly instead of a jelly. Yeah, I would definitely wear it that way. So let's go ahead and see a second coat built up of Mindful Meditation. And as you can see, we're getting a slightly different color when it's put over that cream. Built up on its own, it has more of a dusty quality to it, where when we put it over Sea Blossom, you almost get this like pink bubblegum tone in it. So yeah, there there is a difference. I would still say I would want to stick somewhere close to this family without straying too far into darker colors or anything where that creaminess is really going to affect the color. So that one was Mindful Meditation, and this is going on my spring rack. And then the next color I also got on the Last Chance sale section of the website. This one is called Sunset, and I don't remember the price of this one. It was somewhere between $7 and $8, I think maybe $6 and some change. There is a wide variety in prices in that section, and I thought that this one would be a really fun one for summer. This is more of a jelly base with a bunch of different flakies in here. There's also a wash of a little bit of hollow, maybe even a hollow gold. Very pretty orange crelly. Now for this one, I picked OPI's Flex on the Beach. This is sort of a pastel neon in a corally orange. And then I thought it'd be interesting to try it over a neutral shade, and this is Orly's Rose All Day. So here's one coat of Sunset all on its own. You can see that beautiful squishy base. Should definitely work over other colors. Here's one coat over Flex on the Beach. Oh, and yeah, that just gives you that instant boost in opacity. You're layering up those flakies. And if you wanted more, you could always put two coats or even three coats over the cream to just give yourself not just a boost in opacity, but that brighter tone if that gets you the look that you want. And then let's go ahead and try it over rose all day. See how big of a difference that makes to put it over a neutral instead of a brighter orange. So yeah, that almost has more of a, well, a neutral lean to it. It has more of a 
dusty peachy quality to it as opposed to that very vibrant bright shade of orange from OPI. And here's a second coat of Sunset all on its own. And as always, when we're layering these polishes up on their own, you are going to get a slightly different look because you will, of course, have more of the components in each layer. But there it is in two coats. So far, it is matching a little bit more with the layering that we did over Rose all day. That OPI definitely had a brighter neon look to it, which is perfect for summer. And here we go with a third coat. See how opaque we can get it, how deep of a shade of orange as well. So there's three coats. And yeah, it definitely doesn't get as bright as it did over that bright neon from OPI, that bleached neon. So it's more along the lines of one coat over rose all day, but maybe not quite as neutral leaning. I feel like on camera they're probably going to come off a little bit closer than they are in person, but there is more of that orange quality to it when it's built up on its own, as opposed to there where you're getting that very neutral base. I think that's a good color representation there. And then of course when it's built up on its own, you're going to get more of those beautiful flakies and purples and pinks. Really pretty combo there. So that last one from my Glisten and Glow haul is Sunset. And there we have it, just a small little haul from Glisten and Glow. Let me know which one was your favorite down below. And if you're new, think about hitting that little subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and look at beautiful polish. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in that next one.